The movie starts with a young girl packing her things and leaving a photo of herself and her dad. In the photo, she is small, holding a trophy, and her dad, Jonas, is carrying her. Unfortunately, Jonas is in jail, and he and the girl's mom got divorced because they couldn't find a home. Noah is a girl and she is with her mom. Now they are moving from their old house in the city because it brings back too many sad memories. Noah's mom got married to a rich man named William, and they are happy because he has a lot of money. Their new house is really big and fancy, and Noah is going to meet his mom's new husband, William. When Noah Noah entered, she was shocked to see that the entire house was covered with shiny gold. There were cool sports cars parked inside, too. Starting now, Noah will be living in this house and beginning a new part of her life. Noah's mom really wants her daughter to feel happy and settle in well to their new home and family. I hope she will start to forget the hard times they had in their old house little by little. Noah's mom took her to her room, and it's really nice with a view of the ocean. Noah thought the house was amazing when he saw it for the first time. Noah thinks it's nice that she picked William as her partner. After taking out her things in her room, Noah had some time to look around and see what was nearby. As she walked around, she saw someone in a white clothing hiding behind some leaves. Noah felt a little worried and went back inside to get a sandwich from the fridge. She didn't know that someone in white was following her. The man who looked a bit like William is actually his son, Nick. Now Noah and Nick are like brothers. They discovered their family history, but it's a mix of different families. Tonight, they are all eating dinner together to become closer as a group. They were having a good time joking around when Nick suddenly said he had to go meet some friends for work. As he was walking out of the restaurant, he said something quietly to Noah, but we don't know what it was. After Nick left, Noah also said goodbye. William asked Nick to make sure Noah got home safely. It's a way for them to become more familiar with each other. Nick drove Noah home, but Noah won't stop talking in the car. Nick is playing with the car because he is in a race. While they talk, Noah says something that makes Nick feel bad. He quickly stops the car and leaves Noah alone on a lonely road in the middle of nowhere without thinking. Noah is really mad because Nick left her by herself. At that time, she didn't know who to ask for help, and her phone was almost out of battery. Noah needs to stop a black car for help, but she's scared it might be risky, like a serial killer. Luckily, Noah meets a friendly guy named Manuel. They begin to talk, and Manuel asks Noah to come to a party. The place is filled with young people who are all part of car gangs. Manuel tells Noah to be careful because there's a gang meeting and the most dangerous gang is led by a guy named Ronnie. He has a tattoo of a snake around his neck and another tattoo of a coiled cobra. Manuel told me that Ronnie was released from jail yesterday and there are other gangs in the area as well. He lets them meet Noah. When the boss looked back, it was Nick, the main guy in the group. Noah was surprised to see his stepbrother flirting with all the girls. When Nick stopped to go to the bathroom, Noah went after him. There, Nick made fun of her until he accidentally saw a tattoo behind her ear. Its meaning was not easy to understand but it seemed like it was very important. Nick went back to partying and then a nice girl named Jenna came up to Noah. She was also in Nick's group. At that time, Jenna asked Noah to come and have fun with them. Shortly after that, Ronnie came up to Noah. He gave Noah a drink that had drugs in it. But Noah, who wasn't used to this fancy way of living and felt pressured, reluctantly drank it. Soon after, Nick arrived and swiftly stepped in, hitting the man who had caused problems. Nick still cares about Noah and wanted to make sure he was safe. Nick drove Noah back home in his favorite red car. At that time, Noah was already starting to feel very drunk from the drink that had alcohol in it, so Nick helped him to his room so no one would see. While Noah was resting, the next day, Noah woke up and quickly talked to Nick to find out what happened the night before. Noah was very scared. On the day of the race, Nick was excited to finally ride. He was going to compete against Ronnie, who had just gotten out of jail. At that time, Noah was also there. At last, Nick came in first place in the race. Noah looked emotional and they all kept on celebrating by dancing and having a party. Afterwards, people saw her with another guy. Nick saw it from far away and looked like he might be feeling jealous or upset. He told Noah to stay in his car because he was worried something might happen. The next day, she was feeling better both physically and emotionally. Their parents were busy with a formal event 
event for their company until the evening. At the same time, Nick saw Noah laying by himself on the couch after coming back indoors. Instead of going to his room, he chose to sit beside her instead. This was the first time Nick seemed worried when he was with his younger stepsister. Shortly afterward, they kept looking at each other. They started to get closer until they realized they had hidden feelings for each other. Although they knew it was not right because they were step-siblings, they couldn't help but start to like each other more and more, and they were willing to do something bad. While they were doing that, someone suddenly arrived. The next day, Noah washed the car and it looked really nice. Nick was restless at the dinner table and couldn't stay still. He was standing by a streetlight, looking at Noah. Not long after that, a white car arrived with Dan, Noah's boyfriend who lives in another town. At that time, Noah was surprised to see Dan arrive unexpectedly. Not long after that, Nick hurried into the house and gave Noah a big kiss. Later, Nick looked down at Noah and Dan through the window from upstairs. Now, Noah's mom came inside to be with him. At that time, Dan was going to stay at Nick's house for a few days, and it was going to be chaotic. Noah didn't have feelings for Dan anymore because she was happy with her stepbrother. Every day, Dan asks Noah to hang out but their plans always get cancelled because Nick interrupts. It's clear that Nick is just jealous. Meanwhile, Ronnie keeps planning on how to take Noah away. It's all because he's still mad about something that happened a long time ago. After that, a strange man appears, who is just as determined as Ronnie. One day, Ronnie followed Nick after they left a restaurant. Nick was attacked, but he was able to get away. Nick loves racing, and he also likes to have a good fight. When he gets home, hurt and in bad shape, he sees Dan going into Noah's room. Next, Nick chooses to go to the garden to relax and look at the moon, feeling envious. Nick is surprised to find Noah laying on the porch. It seems like Noah is trying to hide from Dan. Nick sits beside Noah. In the bright moonlight, he sees a scratch on Noah's stomach. Noah was worried when he saw Nick bleeding, so he quickly used some cloth to make a bandage and helped him. Dan found Noah and saw them kissing shortly after. This makes Noah understand that living in this house is not a good idea anymore because they have been discovered being together. As a result, Nick and Noah are spending less time at home because they are falling in love with each other, even though it is not allowed. They stay together all the time, afraid of anything that might separate them. One time, Nick asked where the moon came from and why it was made. This made Noah curious. Nick also said that if love is a sin, then they are very sinful. One day, when Nick was buying a drink and Noah was waiting outside, Ronnie managed to kidnap Noah. In a few minutes, the police and detectives went to William's house to find out what happened. The CCTV video shows that Ronnie is the one who did it. At the same time, Noah is discovered unharmed in a secret room. It seems that Noah's dad, Jonas, is the one who planned everything. He got out of jail and now he is back in the picture. The person who was with Ronnie was actually Jonas himself. Jonas and Ronnie met when they were in the same jail cell. So, everything in this situation is connected, and it ended with Noah's father having him again. His father is motivated by his ambitions, emotions, and a desire for revenge. Jonas never had any visitors when he was in prison before, and now it looks like his dangerous behavior is starting to get worse. He wants to make William unhappy by causing problems with Noah's mother. To keep doing what he wants, he takes Noah's phone and calls his ex-wife, asking her to meet him near the port. Jonas wants William to give him a bag of euros, because William promised Noah's mother he would. At that time, the detectives are prepared to catch Jonas when he arrives, but it's not easy. Jonas is very clever. He placed secret cameras to watch them all the time, so it was difficult to catch him. At last, Nick remembered that there was a device in the car insurance that can track the car. After finding Jonas, Nick and the detective moved quickly to start their plan. Noah went back to the racetrack with his dad because because his dad told him to, but this time, things were not the same. Noah was driving his hero's racing car with tears in his eyes. Finally, Jonas got shot, Ronnie got caught, and everything was fixed. The movie ends here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe our channel. Thank you.